Well, there was a period of time, um, roughly in the 1930s, when we reached the point where we were meeting all of people's needs. And so there was this big question that came up then among uh, people in business. What are we going to do now? If we're meeting all of people's needs, how are we going to continue to grow our business? Well, back then when W.K. Kellogg was still the head of the Kellogg Company, uh, he decided that if we were now meeting all of people's needs, then we needed to scale back on our production capacity so that it was balanced with the needs, with the demand. So your demand and supply were good. So he came up with this interesting idea of going to a 30-hour week rather than a 40-hour week within his company. And then he uh, increased the labor, he increased the salary slightly so that, you know, uh, his employees wouldn't take, you know, the full brunt of uh, reduced income. Um, and then there were a number of firms like Forbes magazine and others who thought the employees are going to be really angry about this. And so they did some surveys to find out. And what they found was just the opposite. Uh, all of the people who were working for Kellogg and are now on this 30-hour week said that they loved it because they now had more time to spend with their families, they had more time to spend in their communities, they had more time to do gardening, came up again and again in the surveys. And so, um, so that was one approach. And then there were a group of companies that formed a coalition together, and they decided that the way to solve this problem was to convince people they needed more than they actually did. And they coined the phrase, the gospel of consumption. <laughs> and, um, and so they then started an advertising campaign to convince people that if they were going to have a quality of life, they had to consume more. And um, that culture really took off in spades in the early 1970s. And if you look at all of the data, the our rate of consumption increased dramatically since the early 1970s. Now, here's the other interesting part about that. Because People have been convinced now, the gospel of consumption has convinced them that if you aren't consuming more, then you're missing out on a quality of life. And um, uh, we have, uh, even in our advertising, et cetera, uh, you know, one of the big goals was to, the, and, 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 and accomplishments that we praised was to spend less of our earned income on food. And the less of our earned income we spend on food means we have more money to spend on other things we can consume, assuming that that was going to improve our quality of life. Now, all of the studies that have been done on this have, in fact, point out just the opposite, that as our consumption rates increased dramatically since the early 1970s, all of our quality of life indicators have gone down. Rates of depression are higher, rates of suicide are higher, et cetera. So this is not the quality of life that we thought we needed, but that's where we are. I, I'm not necessarily saying that we should spend more on food, uh, although I think that uh, uh, developing the kind of quality of food that uh, promotes health and promotes well-being uh, is not something that's going to end up cost costing us more. We spend more at the supermarket when we buy our food, but we're going to spend less on other uh, negative things which have been happening more on, more on health care, et cetera, because we improve our, you know, our, our overall quality of life.